silent prayer or meditation. Uh, also recognizing ukotama kwaka silo samabanda ubaba oshile o inkosietu ubabu zolitini siambega na si yenzale moment of uh, prayer and meditation. Thank you very much. We will now proceed, honorable members. Before we proceed, I just want to remind all of us uh, that uh, the virtual mini plenary is deemed to be in the precinct of parliament and constitute a meeting of the National Assembly for debating processes only. In addition to the rules of the virtual sitting, the rules of the National Assembly, including the rules of debate, do apply. When members, uh, members enjoy the same powers and privileges that apply in the sitting of the National Assembly, members should equally make note that any, anything said in the virtual platform is deemed to have been said to the House and may be ruled upon. All members who have locked in shall be considered uh, to be present and are requested uh, to mute their microphones. I see Honorable Tara Blanche's microphone is still on. Uh, and uh, only unmute when recognized to speak. This is because these mics are very sensitive and will pick up noise which might disturb the attention of other members when recognized to speak, unmute the microphone, connect to, and connect your video. In connection of the video, I killed the... Hey, Honorable yeah. Defraitas. I killed the current three videos, but fast, fast, start. Okay, fine. Honorable Defraitas, we can't even hear the language you are speaking. Please switch off your mic. Please, please. Uh, members may, may make use of the icons on the bar at the bottom of their screen, which has an option that allows a member to put up his her hand to raise points of order. The Secretariat will assist in alerting the chairperson to members requesting to speak. When using the virtual uh, system, members are asked to refrain or desist from unnecessary points of order and in, in, uh, interjections. <clears throat> we shall now proceed to the order of the mini plenary session, which is in the subject for discussion in the name of Honorable L.E. McDonald, addressing the constraints that impact the road transport sector in dealing with conflict in the trucking industry have a, and have a negative impact on the economy. Having said that, uh, before you come in, may I please ask uh, Honorable Defreitas to just uh, switch off the mic. Uh, somebody can call him if you have the number. I don't think he's aware that his mic is on. And I call on the Honorable McDonald to uh, proceed with the debate. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable House Chairperson, um, Honorable um, uh, Minister of Transport, Deputy Minister of Transport, Honorable Members of Parliament, Members of the Portfolio Committee on Transport, uh, fellow South Africans and honorable members. The debate today focuses primarily on the devastating loss of lives and livelihoods of ordinary workers and citizens of South Africa and the senseless destruction of vehicles and goods, a common occurrence of late. But to understand the problem, we need to go back to look at the root causes of this behavior. The split of freight movement from the road and rail network in South Africa has moved strongly towards roads after the deregulation of 
freight movement. This has led to an excess of 500,000 heavy vehicles on our roads. Trucking and trade go together like love and marriage, as the old song goes. On the back of this marriage, truck sales have grown steadily over the years, and even during the economic downturn, it is expected to increase by around 3% year on year. Around 90% of the freight transported in this country is by road. However, as in love and in marriage, it's not always plain sailing. Movement of freight using roads is a cutthroat business. Many operators are being squeezed out of business owing to competition, price sensitivity, and the plain lack of business. Rail 2 is making something of a comeback, and this combined with steps to reduce wear and tear on our roads will place further pressure on the industry. This is where the problem starts. The love of money, or commonly called profiteering, aka capitalism, in the interest to make the most money, foreign nationals are hired, doc documented and undocumented, because they don't belong to organized labor and are willing to work longer hours or less. Against this backdrop, it is easy to see how owners can find themselves taking shortcuts by employing cheaper, less qualified drivers, requiring drivers to work longer hours and even skimping on servicing and maintenance. Such an approach, however, is extremely dangerous and is likely to increase the pressure that is holding the industry back. Some are paid only for every load they complete, making them a danger on the roads because they don't rest. What adds to the fire is the ease at which foreign nationals can obtain PDP permits. South African citizens have to do a criminal records clearance, but foreign nationals are exempted. They only need a letter from the country that can't even be verified. How can that be fair? Our own citizens that are desperate for work have difficulty to obtain PDPs, but it's as easy as one, two, three for foreign foreigners. Chairperson, as you can see, this is what makes this a ticking bomb. And understandably, this causes conflict between the have and have nots. But that's it, the ANC-led government should take urgent measures to protect foreign nationals, truck drivers from violence, intimidation, harassment, but also urgently address the inefficiencies of the PDP licensing and the protection of South African jobs that foreigners so easily can occupy. As the ANC, we strongly condemn the senseless loss of lives and the plead with the masses, don't take matters in your own hands. Give the law enforcement agencies and the Home Affairs Department in particular space to deal with these illegal and undocumented drivers and the monopoly capital that employ these foreign drivers. One of the first starting points to permanently address this issue is the Portfolio Committee on Transport to meet with the Home Affairs Portfolio Committee, police and state-owned enterprises to map out a holistic approach to bring a lasting solution to a very complex issue. This is also a need for serious consultation with the freight trucking industry. This will shape the future with less carnage and destruction. The African National Congress has long resolved in that in the interest of South Africa, we need to move freight from road to rail. This is heavily reinforced in policy documents of the last few years. Transport infrastructure is a critical ingredient in economic development of South Africa at all levels of income. It supports personal well-being and economic growth. Transport infrastructure plays a role as capital input in production and wealth generation. During the COVID period, the truck freight industry kept the economy ticking. For that, we are truly thankful. But this also brought its own problem. With closed way bridges, the truck owners quickly started to cash in on an opportunity with massive overloading happening on our national and provincial roads. Economic growth demands an adequate transport infrastructure. Overloading vehicles, especially freight vehicles, are destroying our roads, impacting negatively on economic growth. The damage causes growth exponentially as the load increase increases. Damages to the roads as a result of overloading leads to higher maintenance and repair costs and shortens the life of a road, which in turn places an additional burden 
additional burden on the state as well as law-abiding road users who ultimately carry the costs of the careless and inconsiderate overloading. If the problem of overloading is not controlled, the cost has to be carried by the road user, which will require significant increases in road user charges, such as fuel levies, fuel, fuel license fees, uh, vehicle license fees, and overloading fees, to mention just a few. Overloading is a safety hazard that leads to unnecessary loss of life and also the rapid deterioration of our roads, resulting in increased maintenance and transport costs. As the freight trucking industry grows, it exposes a fundamental problem in South Africa. The trucks are destroying the roads. Infrastructure faster than government, and national and provincial can maintain them. The question here is, is the freight trucking industry contributing enough to the fiscus to sustain the cost of, to the roads? One of the ways to balance the industry would to reintroduce legislation to regulate the trucking industry with road use levies to mitigate the cost of our roads. But the best option is to get the freight back onto our rail networks. But how do we do this when freight rail is slow, inefficient and expensive and doing this without the loss of jobs in the freight trucking industry? Meanwhile, the existing rail network can be considered to be hugely underutilized because the service provided by Transnet is not complying to the needs of the economy. Huge underinvestment in rail infrastructure and rolling stock contributing to the situation. Transit Rail has priced itself completely out of the market. This state-owned enterprise needs to get back to its basic business model of moving freight by rail fast and efficiently. In our President Ramaphosa's recent State of the Nation address, he reiterated the infrastructure investment plan that would see huge investment and modernization of the rail ne infrastructure network and maintenance of key road corridors. The idea of shifting freight from road to rail has existed as an environmental aspiration for three decades, but calculating the potential benefits has often been difficult. We should aspire to, to a multimodal freight and logistics center, which enables the transfer of freight between road and rail has produced statistics showing it could remove 103 million kilometers of truck journeys from the roads in the next year alone. This figure is almost three times more than previously thought. The ability of rail freight to reduce congestion and pollution on the roads is far greater than previously thought. Strategic, strategic rail freight interchanges should be developed with the help of private sector to support rail freight. We now need the government to support rail by upgrading the existing network and set affordable charges to the enable rail to remove even more freight trucks from our congested roads. The Portfolio Committee on Transport is in the process of finalizing the economic transport regulator. This would greatly assist the country in reducing the cost to all freight. This bill championed by the ANC will be a game changer in all aspects of economic regulation in the transport industry. The trucks need to be reduced. How this is done should be fast-tracked. Chairperson, I thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much. Uh, we now invite the Honorable Hansinger. Thank you, Chairperson. Before I start, allow me to, on behalf of the DA, offer our condolences and sympathy upon the sad news of the passing of King Goodwill Zwelatini. The negative impact on our economy and related constraints that impact on road transportation is a consequence of bluff management, fix nothing decisions, and razzmatazz insight by government. Truck driving is by definition a hazardous job with a constant threat of crashes, crime, looting, poor roads, and bad weather. And then, just to increase the risk as a truck driver in South Africa, you get no protection nor attention despite several high-risk zones that are well known. Even worse, not a single response followed after numerous attempts by stakeholders and specialists who offered help with monitoring, tracking, and surveillance solutions ranging from potholes to attacks. Realizing what it must feel like to be engulfed by flames in a confined driver's camp when petrol bombs and rocks fly through your windscreen, it can be no understatement to say that truckers are going through hell in an effort to earn a living. 
Mindful of what transpired during lockdown stages four and five, the huge contribution by our truckers to the economy ought to have been recognized, but instead they were ignored and snubbed. Our persistent calls on behalf of truckers for a daily hot meal, facilities to refresh, and safe places to rest were equally outrightly rejected. Fleet owners and supporting stakeholders added hugely in keeping our country and economy afloat. Without them, our shelves would have been void and shops empty. Shamefully, despite all efforts by the DA, no response followed on calls asking for validity extension on vehicle licenses, let alone waiving it in appreciation for their work when all else was standing still. Based on the sea track flight track and transport index, we are 5.6% low, the 2019 levels, and 7% below all-time high achievements of 2018. This shows that before the first COVID-19 lockdown, our transport economy already backslid. All road to rail efforts thus far have failed. And if any meaningful progress is to be achieved with a constant increase in road haulage volumes, a serious assessment of all our freight and cargo terminals would need to be undertaken as a matter of urgency. Without exception, all our bulk facilities, import and export, container clearance and holding yards are in the wrong places and not linked to any rail distribution network or effectively positioned next to any of our road corridors. For many years, air freight has been one of the fastest growing freight transport sectors. However, since the tourism industry remains under immense pressure, this has changed significantly as traditional passenger aircraft now carry more cargo than actual freight aircraft. Yet, not a single rail terminal is anywhere near any of our airports. Air freight does cover only 2% of the freight that crosses our borders by weight compared to 60% of sea freight. However, air freight makes up 30% of the value cross-border trade, a noteworthy game changer which only the trucking sector has responded to. Often referred to as the arteries of South Africa's economy, the general condition of our road surfaces are bad. The huge road maintenance backlog contributes negatively to economic growth and not just for trucks. This due to vehicle damage and freight losses ever increasing minus values and charges to the base cost of transportation. Roads don't get fixed because nationally, Sunroll is the preferred beneficiary in budget allocations over provinces and over municipalities. A very basic five-year budget comparison between provinces and Sunroll shows the following. Mindful that our nine provinces look after 273,000 kilometers of road and Sunroll look over a mere 21,000 kilometers. The nine provinces received a 4.1 billion rand increase compared to Sunroll's 11.4 billion rand more over the last five years. Given this anti-funding approach by the ANC, naturally bad road conditions everywhere else are navigating vehicles to the Sunroll Road franchise with its ever-increasing e-toll and toll fees. A recent study indicating the impact of GFIP e-toll charges on the mining industry of Mpumalanga concluded a 17% increase to the base cost to the province, which shows that the GFIP e-toll economic impact is far wider negative in consequence, yet this is still not realized and hardly considered whenever mentioned. Equal in truth of saying that you find a good road or good roads not because of a great economy, instead that you build a great economy after establishing a reliable road network. Fact is, our economy will fail if our roads fail. Roads and transport infrastructure should be at the heart of economic recovery of South Africa, something the DA thoroughly understands and will manage a lot better. I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Hans Singer. May I now uh, call on the Honorable Nolichungu? 
Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, allow me to take this opportunity and pass my condolences to the family of King Goodwill Zuelitini and the family of Mtokozi Sintumba. Inga emi pefumlo yabo inga lalango tolo utiko abakanyi selengo kanyi solunga jami. Chairperson, the problems of the road transportation and in particular road freight challenges must be properly diagnosed if we are not to paper over the cracks. The most debilitating of these challenges has been and continues to be the government's inability to revolutionize our roads network so as to cater for modern societal and economic needs. We might be fooled by the continu continuous claims that we have the most complex and extensive road network in the continent. But this is absolutely meaningless if this network is not aligned with population growth and with nodes of industrial development. Because we have an, in actual fact, de-industrialized as a country, we have not developed our road network to the level we should have developed it. What we have is still an apartheid road system aimed at transporting raw material to the ocean where it would be exported. It is this extremely limited view of the developmental possibilities that our roads and road freight in particular can catalyze that leads to, the, to these continuous conflicts in this road freight industry. The second reason is that exactly because of constraints perception of the developmental potential of the road freight, we have simply left the trucking industry untransformed. It is very much dominated by white people who have a very this disdainful perception of African people. They treat their workers like debt, force them to work under extremely difficult conditions and pay them slave wages. The most vulnerable of African workers to this sort of treatment are our siblings from other African countries. They get paid peanuts and are afforded no basic labor rights that South Africans rightfully demand. The main enemy therefore are the white owners of trucking industry who are obsessed with exploiting the cheap and easily dispensable black labor from our African siblings. This is aided and abated by the ruling party. It is the reluctance of the ruling party to transform this industry that let whites think they can do as they wish to black workers. It is the refusal of the ruling party to industrialize our economy that has led to a very constrained road freight industry. We argue that the government does not have any political will to resolve this tracking crisis, taking into account that tracking industry has been under siege for more than three years now, but still there are no legis legislative measures in place to address the issue. To date, the white mobility cap capital tracking business refuses to open markets for black players and banks still make it difficult for aspirant new black owners to access finance. While rail transport is the backbone of many economies as it transport large volumes of people and goods, inaccessibility of rail, road, rail in the country has put a lot strain on the road freight. The passenger rail agency has been facing financial problems for a while now, and Transnet, Transnet has been transporting less than 30% of the road freight tons in South Africa. It has also been reported that since 2013, Metro Rail has been losing passenger volumes from 50 million passenger journeys to as low as 7 million passenger journeys in December 2019. We therefore recommend that in order to ensure stability within the tracking industry, the government needs to act urgently in resolving financial rules at PRASA, including replacing aging infrastructure so that both passenger and freight transport operate interchangeably. As it stands, the trucking industry seems to be the only viable mode of transport, which is able, which is a threat to our ailing economy, as it remains engulfed by uncertainty, turbulence, and shenanigans. And we all have the ANC to thank for this mess. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Nolichungu.
We proceed and the next speaker is the Honorable Kumalo. Thank you, uh, Slalo Oson Pegile. Eh, on on Moshe, no se le on Moshe, Amalunga, Ason Pegile. Slalom Fumele, Neat Hoben, Kalele in Sugazul, Nenzun Gulionke, Mogoslele, is Silo Sawazul, Ugba, Ulale, Pumule, is Silo Samazul. Uh, Chairperson, over the past year, there has been much reported on conflict in the trucking industry. This conflict occurred at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic and served to disrupt the trucking industry, which is involved in road freight. Much of the issues raised in the media about the conflict is espoused by the demands of the Alternative Truck Drivers Federation, where, which reflected as xenophobic. The South African truck drivers who are in conflict with foreign nationals are employed by the local tra trucking industry and is being favored. The underlying essence of the problem is economic and related to legislation and regulations which governs the trucking industry. House Chair, the conflict also resulted in violence and the destruction of trucks, goods, and damages road infrastructure. Major roads were blocked by truck drivers utilizing trucks, which negatively affected the del delivery freight under disaster management regulations. The violent protest was geared towards the disruption of economic activity, which is dependent on the logistics and freight transport through trucking. Through trucking, the conflict in the trucking industry had a negative impact on the economy. It is therefore important that underlying causes and issues are, which are identified and given appropriate attention by government. House Chair, the Road Freight Association and Truck Drivers Association have publicly accepted that 80% of truck drivers in South Africa are South Africans. The Road Freight Association and Truck Drivers Association appeal to government to take action about the violent nature of the protest and destruction of the property. This destruction of property is objectable as it reduces the asset base of the country and comes at an economic cost to the country. It also negative impact on, on the fiscals as the loss of this property means replacement occurs through legal payment less tax. The Minister of Transport in conjunction with other ministers from Home Affairs and Security Cluster intervened and developed a program for dealing with disruption of, 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 of protest. What makes this matter more serious? Besides the minority of drivers in the country being foreign nationals is that trucking industry in South Africa is also complemented by trucking, trucking from neighboring countries. South Africa is seen, is, is seen as the entry point for the delivered goods of, South, of Southern African countries, which border our country. This type of conflict therefore has serious implication to negatively affect our relations with neighboring African countries. And this should not be allowed to happen. House Chairperson, why is the violence and destruction of property must be condemned as there is no justification for that. In this country, as the ANC-led government is a, is a caring government and, it is, and its, door are, its doors are open to listen to concerns, and, to concerns and areas of problems in order to find workable solutions. However, some of the underlying causes of the tracking conflict need to be raised and attended to to prevent such an occurrence in the future. In terms of the regulations governing public, public driver's permit, the conditions for South Africans and foreign nationals to obtain it is different. South, Africa, South African drivers are required to get legal clearance prior obtaining a PDP in comparison to foreign nationals, as foreign nationals are not subjected to 
legal clearance. This means that foreign nations are obtaining the PDP quicker than South Africans. Many foreign nationals apply for PDPs in South Africa with driver's licenses obtained in other countries. In Southern Africa, and there is no local verification of the driver's licenses obtained in the neighboring countries. The conditions of employment for South African drivers and, for, and foreign nationals are not the same as drivers who are foreign nationals uh, get paid per trip. This means that they optimize income, income through doing many trips, which is a problem from, from a road safety point of view, given the time, the number of hours they, they spend on the road. The employer of the truck drivers have utilized this as means to reduce domestic Check. labor costs in the trucking industry. Check. It is therefore important that conditions of employment between drivers must be within the law. House Chair, the same equality should occur in terms of Honorable the Kumalo. PDP. Honorable yes, Kumalo. Chair. Yes, Just Chair. Speak, uh, Honorable Ngola. No, Chair, I, I just wanted to say the honorable member must choose whether she wants to show us her face or King Shaka because she keeps on. No, uh, in no, the no, no, no. No, I'm, I'm aware of what has been happening. And then uh, let's remember, let's not talk about that. Uh, oh, Mrs. King, oh, just, just put your, just put your, your, yes, you are fine now. You can proceed. I think your camera was slanting. I didn't want to disturb you and worry about the background. Thank you. Continue. Thank you, Chair. Am I audible? You Chair, are audible. Am I, am I, yes, thank you, you Chair. The, the same equality should occur in terms of acquiring PDPs, as foreign nationals should also require legal clearance to qualify for PDPs in South Africa. The conflict in in the trucking industry has implications for Southern African trade as South African registered trucks to deliver goods in neighboring countries and trucks from neighboring countries deliver goods to South Africa and, and, and to pick up freight to deliver in neighboring countries. South Africa is the point of entry and export of goods for Southern African countries. And it is important that the African Free Trade Agreement is not disrupted through as such, which assumes the xenophobic form. Therefore, it is important that Department of Transport and the single transport regulate, regulate, re, regulatory, which is being envisaged through new legislation in conjunction, in conjunction with Thank home affairs much. and labor. And labor is able to Thank deal you, with... Ma. Thank you, Sesquile. You. Your, your time has expired. Thank you very much. Uh, we proceed, honorable members. The next speaker is uh, Honorable Sitole. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Give me a lengi, the Kobise Ikanda, the Kalele Untana Open Dangan, Undunakurazulu, Kalelis Zonga Samazulu, Mokota Magunguyama. Honorable Chairperson, the trucking industry is one of the cornerstones of the road transport sector in South Africa. This industry transport food, textiles, buildings, materials, coal, and more recently, the precious COVID-19 vaccines. The trucking industry directly impact the lives of each and every South African by transporting goods essentially for daily life. With this in mind, it is therefore apparent that any conflict in the trucking industry will also have a knock on effect on the economy. This means that strike action, which is often accompanied by destruction of property and other violence act, has a much greater impact than any face value. Truck owners incur additional cost paying for the security escort conveyors are efforts and forced to replace vehicles. And these costs are ultimately passed along 
the, may, the men and the women of the street who end up paying more for basic Christian necessities. A cost increase that is motivated by increase in transporting costs. Then there is the human cost with drivers suffering various injuries and even loss of life. In July 2019, South African Road Freight Association estimated that over 200 lives had been lost and that over a thousand vehicles and car goers had been destroyed since the war on track began. The AR further estimated that the cost to the economy was over one billion rand. That was almost two years ago, before the revenge of COVID-19 further battered our already fudging economy. Drivers and truck companies are at an impasse with no solution in sight. In November 2020, the president estimated an internal, established an internal ministerial committee comprised of ministers and senior managers of the Department of Employment and Labor, Home Affairs, Police, Transport, and State Security together with the Premier of KZN and following months of violent strike, strike actions. In particular, the issues should around the employment of foreign national as a driver has been suggested as the root of much of the violence. When launched, the committees announced this intention to review policy, legislation, and regulation in matters of migration and employment, and that the president would, will make pronouncement as soon as the cabinet has been briefed on, on progress to date. It has now been almost three months and no pronouncement, feedback, or solution-oriented response have been forthcoming. We, we cannot wait any longer. Lives are being lost, properties being damaged or completely destroyed, and the ability of tracking industry to make a possible contribution towards our GDP and the economy as, as a whole, it is being undermined. See, I'm a pothole zone in the home where I go first day. I go to Malang. Galon Zelage, honourable chairperson. In case of your party, it's a luguti. I'm a program is going to come early. The implement. Yeah, bonga cool. Thank you very much. Togo Zem Fonishwa Sitole. The next speaker is the honourable May. Honorable May of the FF Plus. Do we have Honorable May on the platform, uh, Secretary, Under Secretary? Okay, yeah, let sir. me pass if you don't find him and then we'll come. Yes. Honorable April is here, uh, May is not here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, unless you have, uh, you haven't uh, reported to the chief whip that you are now in the FF plan, unfortunately. <laughs> it was a say. joke. <laughs> Thank you. Honorable Swart, please proceed. We will uh, allow her chair. to come if she comes. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you House Chair. The ACDP joins other speakers in expressing our deepest condolences on the passing of His Majesty, King Goodwill's Relatini. Our thoughts and prayers are with the royal family and the Zulu nation at the sad time. May His Majesty the King rest in peace. Last year, the ACDP shares the deep concerns about the increasing number of criminal attacks on the trucking industry, where foreign drivers are sadly the frequent victims. In many cases, these are not isolated incidents but well-planned and coordinated attacks. For example, during one night in November alone, 20 trucks were petrol bombed on four major freeways around the Heidelberg area. These attacks all start at same time. Drivers were attacked, their cargoes looted, and trucks burnt. Stuart O'Leary of Fleetwatch said, this can no longer be regarded as protest action. No matter what the cause of the protest, these attacks are a declaration of war against truckers and the economy, which has been well planned over multiple levels. President Ramaphosa rightfully condemned these attacks. 
emphasizing the negative effects that tax will have on the economy. It is, however, up to government and the SAPs to deal decisively with these criminal acts. Yet sadly, SAPs and criminal crime intelligence are embroiled in internal conflicts. The ACDP believes these attacks amount to economic sabotage. As a result of poor rail infrastructure, more than 70% of freight is transported by road. It is the trucking industry that not only keeps the wheels of the economy moving, but transported food and other necessities during the COVID-19 hard lockdown period. The freight industry needs protection from government. Their cries for help must be heard. Just think if they decided to go on strike in protest against the lack of protection. Should all trucks stop operating as a form of protest, not only will the economy be devastated, but there will be widespread shortages of food, fuel, and other supplies. House Chair, some of the concerns expressed by local truck drivers may be genuine. Certain companies are not without blame, hiring foreign nationals without proper papers. Their workers who are not unionized are also easy to exploit and are unlikely to demand higher, lay, higher wages. But this does not justify criminality. It's not only about truck drivers, but also about maintaining the rule of law and restoring the economy. The ACDP, in conclusion, calls on the police to crack, down, to crack down and restore law and order on our roads. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Swart. Uh, we now proceed uh, to the, oh, let me check if the Honorable May is back on the platform. Honorable May. Okay. Um, we now move just to confirm if UDM is not in the platform. No. Um, the ATM, not. Uh, Honorable Yabo. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, House Chair. I would like to extend the, the sincerest of condolences to the nation of uh, the Zulu people uh, for the passing of their uh, king uh, today. Conflict in the trucking industry has its roots in the form of the conflict which appears as xenophobia. <laughs> But within the economics of the trucking industry, it is also rooted within the legislative and regulatory framework. The focus of this input is on the economics of trucking versus rail and the rationale for moving freight and goods from road to rail. The road trucking industry plays a crucial part in the movement of goods and is a leading mode of transport in the freight industry in South Africa and in the Southern African region. The country has also a very well developed rail infrastructure. The cost of freight transport through trucking and high rail tariffs adds to structural inflation in the country and negatively impacts on the cost of doing business in the country. This in turn negatively impacts on the development of the economy. Rail as a mode of transport is far more efficient than trucking and the government wants to move goods from road to rail. This does not necessarily mean that trucking will be completely diminished and neither does it mean that it will have to result in job losses. Rail is a more efficient mode of transport in comparison to trucking as it can carry a greater volume of goods and hence provides economies of scale. The rail network is a single nationally integrated network and cannot be split between passengers and cargo transport. One rail entity with cargo and passengers is more economically viable than a split business. In small markets, economies of scale are required. Over the last few years in many parts of the country, the rail network has witnessed destruction through vandalism, and this negatively effect, affects the efficiency of Transnet freight rail. This network requires fixing and develop further development as well as adequate security from any further distraction. This is to ensure the movement of goods from road to rail. This must occur to ensure that there is a reduction in the movement of goods through tracking on the roads in favor of rail, which can be more efficient with greater economies of scale. House Chair, the reduction of tracking 
for freight of goods will ensure that national and provincial roads will require less maintenance. The limited budget allocation to roads can then be utilized less for maintenance and more for road development, especially in the rural areas. Tracking of different types of goods is a highly profitable business in South Africa for two reasons. One, the efficiency of rail and regulated margins, which ensures that road transport is more profitable for business rather than rail. Two, the weight of the trucks and the number of trucks on national and provincial roads is responsible for damage of the road surfaces. This means the resurfacing and maintenance must occur at greater cost more frequently than should be the case. The case of the entry from Durban into the inland market is instructive as the road was planned on the basis of resurfacing every seven years. But due to the high usage of this road by trucks, it has to be resurfaced every three years. The issue of way bridges is not being functional in many areas and ensures that trucks carry more cargo than is allowed, thereby negatively impacting on the road network and increasing maintenance costs as this is funded by the fiscus. This in turn results in more expensive toll roads that have to be developed by Sunrun, which leads to increased freight and transport costs. In the petroleum sector, a large volume of petrol and diesel is transported by trucks on the N3 as the regulatory framework has made this a profitable activity in comparison to pipeline and rail transport. This is a hazardous product and is more safely transported by rail and pipeline. This pattern repeats itself in the mining industry where ore is transported by road instead of rail from the Northern Cape to Richards Bay as the mining companies make a transport margin through trucking. The Transnet pipeline tariff is overpriced as it is benchmarked against road freight and not a similar pipeline or rail. Transnet rail has priced itself outside of the market as it depends on regulated margins rather than on the volume of cargo it can move for its income. Therefore, tracking is the choice for business to move freight as it allows for transport profitability as tracking of goods is no longer a cost center but a profit center. This occurs at the expense of road safety through transport of hazardous products and drivers spending long hours on the road. There is a need for government to review the transnet rail business model and regulated margin structure as such a business which should not rely on regulated margins but on the volume of freight delivered. The same review should apply to petroleum pipelines as these tariffs are benchmarked against road transport, which is the most inefficient for long haul freight. House Chair, in the past, regulated tariffs for road transport were based on the return on assets model and was treated as a cost center and therefore based on cost recovery. The capital asset pricing model, however, of NERSA and the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy converted cost centers to profit centers, which made road transport of fuel a very profitable business at the expense of rail and pipeline. The development of the single transport regulator must ensure efficient price and regulatory margins across all forms of transport. Enforcement of regulation and legislation required should be, should be to ensure economic efficiency and road safety for trucks as much as cars, buses, or taxis. The opposition DA plan for rail is confused and confusing, bordering on schizophrenia on the one hand, as it suggests that the Western Cape province take over the metro rail whereas it does not have the budget for its improvement or functioning. On the other hand, it suggests in parliament that Transnet Freight Rail should be integrated with PRASA as this will provide integration and economies of scale. The rail network is a national integrated network which services both the movement of goods and people. Therefore, it cannot be cut into small provincial pieces and still retain economies of scale. A national integrated plan under a single transport regulator is required to solve this problem. And that is coherent. That is a coherent solution, House Chair. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Yabo. We now move to the NFP, the Honorable CBC. Uh, Honorable House Chair. Name ang tate leli tuba on eka meni gam soni shawe tum umongameli ukala ne sizo nendo ngulu na bantuana bagua zulu ukota ma gonga ngezola kesi tige onga ngezola kera pumulega shabantuana nendo ngulu bakeni 
Uh, House Chair, it is vitally important that we tighten up measures to address the concerns that impact road transportation. I could not agree more with this because transportation plays a very key role in the economic growth and development of this country. The more these constraints prevail and remain unaddressed, it affects the cost of transportation, which in turn affects consumption prices, and that is felt directly by the South African citizens. Towards the end of last year, we saw reports about 84 trucks that were banned in protest by local truck drivers who are complaining of being marginalized in favor of foreign nationals. That protest claimed the life of one driver. It is becoming a norm in South Africa for a life to be lost during strikes and this must be condemned. There were also reports that most strike companies were getting more security, which would lead to a food increase and possible a job blood path. The truck industry creates a lot of jobs in the country. If these matters are left unaddressed, it is a direct attack to the economy. The bargaining council claimed that according to its statistics, the industry employed 44,021 local truck drivers and 6,756 foreigners. According to Stellenbosch University and the World Bank, the cost of South African logistics is estimated to be 11% or 11.8% of gross domestic product. Total turnover for the logistics industry for enterprises only involved in mining, retail, and manufacturing was estimated to be 274 billion in 2018. The transportation industry holds the center of the economy. We as the National Freedom Party would like to concede with a notion that suggests that constraints in this sector must be addressed in a prioritized fashion. See Ngibonge Kakulu staff. Thank you very much, Babus Bisi. And his hotel manje check out the AIC Nikona. No, PAC Nikona. No, uh, Honorable Hendricks, Babus Bisi, Tima, Tima, Mike. Honorable Hendricks. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Honorable Chair, in Islam, a person traveling is a guest that must be given all the comforts uh, as, he go, as he moves along the road. This sector is affected by cross-border truck congestions, increasing cargo hijacks, riots, and protests. They are queues of 13 kilometers long at the Mozambique border with close to 400 trucks, and we can only uh, reduce the backlog in increments of four kilometers a day. Our road network is vital to prosperous uh, South Africa. We have a champion in the Minister of Transport, and we must wait for his continued leadership uh, to resolve all these problems. The Minister must encourage drones to replace some of our trucks, and these drones will then fly above our roads. I just wonder if the minister is up to this to meet the challenges of the fourth industrial revolution, the new abnormal and the internet of things. Thank you very much, honorable house chair. Thank you, Babu Hendricks. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to check if uh, honorable May is back on the platform. If she's Chief, not, she Chief won't Wilson. get another opportunity. Yes, uh, Honorable Vessels. Sorry, Chairperson. There's a technical problem slot? and uh, Honorable Bon May is not uh, able to uh, to connect. Um, and uh, mm. yeah, we don't see him on the platform. We apologize for that. Okay, so there's, there won't be anybody taking the slot there. You won't be speaking on behalf of her. Should we Thank pass? you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, uh, okay. Sorry, <laughs> I'm available. Oh, you are there, Honorable <laughs> May. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry for, for the network problems. You may proceed. Yeah. Om een land economisch te laten groeien, moet dit door een goede vervoerstelsel beschikken. Padvervoer is de afgelopen tien jaar geweldig toegenomen. De grootste reden is het verval van die treinstelsel. 
wat vervoer het groot uitdagings om te oorkom. Een van die grootste is die toename en misdaad. Eienaars doen alles in hulle vermoe om die werkers en die vracht te beskerm. Een voertuig wat uitgebrand word, neem maande om te vervangen als gevolg van die verzekeringseise, wat die aankoop vertraag. Ons sien ook dat daar gereeld stakings is dier werkers als gevolg van hoer loon en werksomstandighede. Die afgelopen tijd het ons gesien dat werkers vir weke staak om rede swart bestuurders van in, uit Afrika in dienst geneem is. Die maatschappij het dit echter ontken. Daar is groot tekort aan goed opgeleide en betrouwbare bestuurders wat die vraag op tijd kan aflever. Ons het ook baie meer opleiding nodig. Baie bestuurders doen ook nie aansoek nie om rede hulle vrees vir hulle lewe. Die swak paai het ook een baie negatieve effect op pad vervoer. En baie geld word bestee aan die herstel van vrachtmotors en die bande moet ook gereeld en dierste vervang word. Die brandstofprys wat gedierig stijg raak, Net, raak nie net die eienaars nie, maar ook die mense op grondvlak, want prijse stijg. Swak infrastructuur is een groot oorzaak van ongelukke en baie mense sterf. Swak paaie word dier die misdadigers uitgebuid en hulle gebruik die stilstaande voertuigen om te hijjack en die bestuurders aan te hou. Dier verzekeringspremies word betaal om die vraag en werkers te beskerm. Die regering sal baie geld bestee om die vloei van voertuigen by grensbosse te, te verbeter. Een voertuig wat staan, kost die eienaar geld. Pad vervoer het die belangrijkste in Zuid-Afrika geword. Dit word die meeste mense gebruik vir, en verkies om rede aflevering vinnig is. Alle klein dorpies kan vinnig bereik word en deur tot deur aflevering neem toe as gevolg van aanlein verkope. Ons mag nie net op pad vervoer steen nie. Ons moet minder voertuig op ons paaie kry en die enigste oplossing is dat spoorvervoer dringend verbeter moet word. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable May. We now proceed to the GA with Honorable Mabena. Getogo za slalo, angtumi mgu glulisa mwezu uchiri ya ischavi nsa wazulu, kutima gwelanga, gwengwe nyama ischava sa mazuli, silo sa mabanda woke, ingwe nyama ukutwil zuelitini. Situmwe ya wengwe nyama ulale ngu kutula uzi mwatome nchizuezi kutungi gilabu wabali meleo. Mluchisa soke ischava. Honorable Chepezen, while trucks were being torched, lives lost, livelihoods affected, and the economy tanking as far back as 2018, ANC ministers were busy carrying bags of money worth millions of rents out of the state security agency headquarters in Pretoria, among other things to influence judges, student movements, elections in the Western Cape, and other devious and morally bankrupt ANC-sponsored crises across the country. Honorable Chairperson, the road freight industry contributes 120, about 121 billion rands to the economy and with an estimated cost due to the violence against the economy between 1.5 billion and 2 billion rands. The alleged reasons for the attacks on the on trucks is that local drivers object to the employment of foreign drivers. Although not only foreign uh, uh, trucks have been uh, attacked, the drivers assaulted and many losing their lives in the process. South African citizens have also been affected, which then confirms that the lazy dismissal of this issue as a spate of xenophobic attacks as offered by Honorable McDonald is inconclusive and insufficient. Honorable Chairperson, throughout all of this chaos, the ANC government and police response has been pathetic to say the least. There is a saying that people get a, a government that they vote for and not a government they wish for. This ANC government has failed and continues to fail. Honorable Chairperson, as far back as May 2018, 35 trucks were, were looted and torched on the entry, resulting in the closure of the entry for 48 hours. The mantra and rhetoric from this ANC government was to shout from the highest peaks of mountains that this was economic sabotage. One would think that having made this undertaking, the department and the relevant state agencies would have crafted a plan and by now to nip the issue in the bud. But the reality is that the state security agencies' capacity and operations are compromised and that leaves our country vulnerable. Honorable Chairperson, at the peak of this issue, on average, 30 to 40 cases of truck attacks a month were reported. In 2019, an estimated 1,300 trucks were attacked, damaged, and destroyed, with the highest concentration being the, on, the, on the 2nd of June 2019, where 17 truck trailer rigs were torched on the entry in Wazul Natal. This highway linking Gauteng to Devon, Africa's busiest port, was closed for hours on that chaotic day. 
At least 60 trucks have been torched nationwide today during the highest peak month being in May 2019. Honorable Chairperson, I asked the question in the portfolio committee to the DG of Transport on the collaboration between intelligence, defense, and the police on the progress of any interventions through the National Joint Operational Intelligence Structure, and we never received a satisfactory reply, which confirms that we are in deep trouble. Honorable Chairperson, the Department of Transport is a ministry that has no direction, inspires no leadership, and a department that has a very troubling and hostile relationship with the truth. This, this motion, as important as it is, is just proof enough that at the core of the issue is not individuals, but the crux of the issue is the friction and confusion between the ANC caucus in the committee and the Department of Transport. Honorable Chairperson, the ANC speakers are asking questions in this debate and offer no solutions. The DA will offer the below solutions on their behalf. Number one, initiate and coordinate an ad hoc sub, a subcommittee within the, the National Joint Operational and, and, and Intelligence Structure and locate the response within the presidency with weekly tracking and monitoring and reporting. Secondly, immediately implement the, the recommendations of the high level review panel on the state security agency by Dr. Sidney Mufama, the report and restore confidence in the intelligence sector. Thirdly, coordinate and devolve the rapid response through provincial governments and rope in the metropolis departments of Etewini, Johannesburg, and Egurulene. Fourthly, create a road freight directorate within the Department of Transport to coordinate and offer ongoing support, which includes but not limited to, to daily hot meals, facilities to refresh and safe resting places to our road freight sector. Lastly, fire the Minister of Transport, Mr. Figile Mbalula, fire the Minister of Police, Mr. Peggy Kele, and the National Police Commissioner General Kesha Stone and restore confidence in our law enforcement agencies. I thank you. Bye, Tinguinya. The Honorable Mbalula will now take the floor. Honorable Minister. Honorable Minister, you, you are still muted, I think. I'm getting... Uh... Please unmute. Yeah, you are fine now. You are fine now. We can hear you. Thank you, um, Honorable Chair. Uh, honorable members, let me join uh, the members... Honorable members, in passing condolences to the Zulu nation and the entire family. Indeed, the big three of the Baobab has fallen. Uh, we also pass our condolences on the passing away of um, our brother uh, in Gauteng yesterday, Umtogosis. Si chona gu family ago, the act that happened on his passing away, uh, we joined the president of the republic in condemning uh, that act by the South African police service, uh, taking away the life of Umtogosis. The, the road freight sector is the dominant uh, means of land freight transport in South Africa. As a consequence, there is a number of highly effective <coughs> road freight uh, operations that are managed uh, to world-class standards. And uh, these are the lifeblood of the national freight logistics system, moving more than 80% of all industrial cargo. However, there is growing number of substandard operations, which are generally undercapitalized 
lack managerial, managerial and technical skills, use poor man, maintained vehicles, and depend on low levels of enforcement uh, to survive. In South Africa, Chair, there is a total land freight volume approximately 1.67 billion tons annually, with uh, road freight transporting 1.5 billion and rail approximately 220 million tons annually. In the evaluation of modal potential and the scope for competition between modes, the major determinants of modal choice are the freight characteristics of the commodities, as well as the service demand of the industries which form the market for transport services for specific commodities. Critical challenges facing the road uh, freight logistics sector include barriers to entry for first-time trucking companies, creating an unfair advantage to establish firms and continue to hinder first-time entry into the business. Such barriers include operational experience in logistics, access to capital, vehicle finance, pre-tender requirements by the industry such as safety quality management system and road transport management system. There is an undeniable need for human resource capitalization in the sector. This is demonstrated by the increasing employment of foreign nationals in contravention of labor laws, which provides that priority be given to South Africans, unless there is a scarce skill or skill shortage, which, which ought to be dealt with thoroughly, reskilling, and, uh, and when uh, this is needed. Chairperson, President Ramaphosa has mandated an interministerial committee led by Minister of Labor and Employment to address the matters relating to the attacks on trucks uh, who are foreign nationals. The IMC is composed of the Ministers of Labor, Transport, Home Affairs, Police, Trade, Industry, and Competition, and State Security, and Small Business, Tourism, International Relations, as well as Justice and constitutional development. In tackling these challenges, we must appreciate that we are facing a major challenge to supply chains and freight logistics across the SADC uh, region, which may also contribute to elevated security threats. The lawlessness that has characterized the conduct of these aggrieved, who elect to take the law into their own hands, is something we must all condemn in the strongest possible terms something I've not heard uh, uh, in these chambers uh, today. Not only is this conduct unacceptable, but it should be nipped in the bud. As a consequence of this conduct, we have seen our neighbors in the region putting up legal barriers against South African drivers entering their national territories. Between 2018 and 2021, 175 trucks have been tossed 104 damage and eight hijacked. We must firm up our own policy because driving is not uh, a skill we don't have. We have it galore. And uh, we can't import that skill anywhere else. We must deal and firm up our own policy and implement it uh, thoroughly. While six drivers were killed and 17 injured, our law enforcement authorities are investigating 257 cases related to this incident. The destruction of the tracking property leads to disruptions in the economic uh, activity. South Africa has long-standing agreements in respect of labor migration of foreign nationals to work in various sectors, particularly the mining sector. In recent years, we have seen rampant disregard of labor and immigration laws by freight logistics companies, which laws regulate employment of foreign nationals across various sectors. We have agreed that there is an urgent need to convene meeting of certain ministers of the economic and security clusters uh, together with uh, the Department of International Relations and Cooperation to address these matters decisively. 
This meeting must, among others, make a firm commitment to coordinating labor migration policies, promoting free movement of goods, chairperson the rule of law, and the centrality of law enforcement remains a cornerstone of our constitutional democracy. Our law enforcement agencies have been hard at work on this matter. We have no doubt that the success in arresting the criminality under the guise of le legitimate protests, which take the form of violent conflict and torching of trucks, lies in the ability of our law enforcement authorities to speedily conclude investigation, apprehend and prosecute those found guilty of this. While long-term interventions have been put in place, we have committed uh, to the following actions to arrest the illegal conduct. Honorable Mabena, now listen carefully. Enhance existing joint uh, enforcement operations between the SAPs, the Department of Labor, uh, the Department of Home Affairs, and the Road Traffic Management Co Corporation. Such law enforcement operations will include unannounced inspections at the premises of non-compliant operators and logistic companies. Strengthen the process of validation and verification of immigration documents, work permits, and foreign driver's licenses. In the case of driver's licenses, a synchronized process between countries is proposed. This will ensure that operators are accorded the same treatment in the dispatching uh, and receiving uh, uh, of countries. The National Road Traffic Act requires foreign operators to make use of an operator card. The rationale for such a provision is to enable government to manage situations where an operator does not follow the relevant laws in South Africa. These cards will have a, a finite validity period and non-compliance with the relevant laws uh, will result in the deregistration of the operator in question. The review will also include determining a validity period for professional driving permits for foreign drivers. It is our expectation that these rules will be applied uniformly all member countries of, uh, in all member countries of, of SADC. The criminality that has characterized the road freight industry must never sully the timeless bonds forged in the trenches between our people in the region. It is for that uh, very reason that we have committed to redoubling our efforts to deal with this criminal conduct, uh, a debilitating blow, and throw a book at those who undermine the rule of law. The challenges we are confronted with in the tracking industry have emphasized the agency of putting in place an effective economic regulation regime for the transport sector. Effective government oversight and economic regulation is needed to ensure technical and operational, and operational um, uh, uh, pricing efficiency across uh, the transport sector. Linked to this is addressing the challenges brought about by the fact that more than 80% of all industrial cargo is transported by road. The benefit of restructuring of our rate policy framework will be increasing efficiency of rail logistics, lower freight rates, more reliable services, a wider selection of rail services. Removal of monopoly for rail services will promote a private sector investment and involvement in rail industries, which will then allow integration, ensure that there is existing and future rolling stock will be better utilized and more volume on rail will result in reduction of haulage. Ensure, ensure, ensure that more tonnage is moved on rail, which will yield revenues, improve rail services to provide more competitive export environment, expansion of the rail industry and integration into the overall logistic framework that will reduce the need for government capital expenditure, ensure modernization of the rail services as the opportunity created for investment by private sector operators revitalization and expansion of the railway industry and the provision of opportunities for investment and involvement by the private sector will permit further uh, triple BEE company creation and investment. I thank you, uh, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, thank you very much.
the Honorable McDonald to conclude the discussions. Honorable McDonald, you save one minute, uh, 25 seconds in your first slot. You may use that. Thank you. Thank you, House Chairperson. Um, this debate was a long overdue and a very important debate. Um, the, the consensus across all parties here was that we need to immediately move freight from road to rail. But in the process of doing this, we need to encourage the trucking industry to start complying to the rules and laws of this country and to make sure that they do not employ undocumented, unlicensed drivers. And that in the same instance, we must ask the people of South Africa not to take the law in their own hands. It is impossible to take the law in your own hands. We can't have people destroy people's lives and the, the livelihoods of, of people. In the same, I just want to add that this was such an important debate, but it always has to be marred by somebody. Honorable uh, uh, Mabena couldn't sit down for one minute and listen to the speech that I presented uh, because I did give solutions and he made it a political speech, which was not about the politics. It was about the people of South Africa that are dying on the roads every day. Honorable Chairperson, the, the freight must get off the road. There is no two ways about it. And the government, the ANC government is more than capable of producing a product that will not cause job losses in the, in the trucking industry, but enhance the trucking industry. And in the same instance, bring a private public participation in, uh, in, in the rail industry and bring enormous jobs in that industry. When we combine Transnet and Praza back to its original um, super rail structure and start moving goods from road to rail. I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable McDonald. Uh, thank you for the discussion topic and thank you for all the participants. Uh, it was a good uh, attendance on a Friday. Thank you very much. Uh, honorable members, that concludes the debate and the business of the virtual mini, mini plenary uh, will now arise. Thank you. Long live